Today we're gonna to be tackling what every woman feels like. I don't care if you're a woman just starting out in makeup. I don't care if you're 90 years plus. It seems like if we can't get our foundation right, our makeup just doesn't look right. After 20 plus years of experimenting and doing different things on my face, probably more like 30 plus years, I feel like I finally have stumbled onto a routine that works so well for me for longevity, for no texture, no pores, covering up dark spots, my dark circles, all of the things that you hope doesn't happen. I feel like I've finally tackled and gotten a really good routine down. And I wanted to bring you from very start to very finish and I'm breaking this down. Normally this would only take me probably about eight to 10 minutes to do it on myself, but I'm breaking it down for you in such a way that you can see each individual step and you can see how I really, really work hard on perfecting my canvas or getting flawless foundation. So you're gonna see me next and I won't have any, um, I won't have any makeup on except for my eye makeup. And then I'll finish this makeup with you at the very end. So let's get into the video so that you can see all about how I get flawless foundation on this 53 year old skin. So these tips that I've learned are very basic, but put them all together and they make that flawless, beautiful canvas that we all want. First of all, I want you to exfoliate your skin in your skincare routine, and then I want you to moisturize. Sometimes I even will do a double moisturize underneath my eyes, and then I'll go ahead and I'll put my SPF on, and I let everything sit for a while and sink in really good. All right, the next thing I want you to do is I want you to take a single tissue. This is a single ply tissue, and I'm going to just fold it up, put it around on my finger, and I'm going to press this all over my face. These are the spots that seem to get the creasing and so I'm just pressing in here to make sure that there's no extra oil on here because now you've let everything set in it's just going to be uh, the extra is just going to be sitting on top of your skin. The primer that I've been testing out right now that I'm quite impressed with is the no, no pore zone primer mattifying primer from Milani. Now this I enjoy because it is summertime um, it's hot and you know we're getting on the tail end of that but still at the same time I think that we could use this to keep our makeup set down our oils from not breaking through remember that primer is important to go in between our moisturizer and our foundation in order to create that barrier so that our foundation doesn't sink into our skin. I use a pea size amount, hopefully you can see that, and then I'm just going to really concentrate here on the areas where I have large pores, and then whatever's left, I'm gonna put on the perimeter, but my large pores are what bother me the most, so I'm gonna kinda just press and push that into my skin. You can put it up underneath your eyes a little bit. It will help create that barrier there as well. Next, because of my dark, dark discoloration through this area, and there are a lot of age spots on my face, I'm gonna take the Pixie Corrector in Brightening Peach. Online, you can order a little bit darker one, which is apricot. I'm also taking a paddle brush. I was sticking my finger down in here, but now it's so deep that it's a little bit hard to do that. So I am taking that and I am going to not a lot, but lightly go over the places that really need this extra corrector that I know for a fact are gonna have a problem on my particular face. I'm going to dot it on my age spots, which I have several that are out here, and they might be acne scars that have turned dark through time. And I'm going to hit all of these points that are red. And then when I'm done doing that, I'm just gonna take my fingers and I'm gonna blend it out. Your finger just kinda seems to be a little bit warmer. And what happens for me is it just kind of melts into the skin with that warmth. So I am just going to dot everywhere that I have put that and go ahead and make sure that it's really blended in. Once you have that done, then the magic happens. And the magic happens from putting powder on next. If you haven't seen Wayne Goss's video about this, this for me as a mature woman has completely changed the game for me being able to keep on my foundation much, much longer, use less foundation, 
and it doesn't show up as much texture as I was having before. So I'm going to use this. This is the Sheer Tint from e.l.f. powder. It's a pressed powder that's very light and very airy. You don't want to use too much and you always want to tap it off. The reason is, is if you get too heavy of a coat on, you're going to ball up as you put on your foundation, especially if your foundation is super light. So I want you to just go over everything and keep in mind that I want you also to go over underneath those eyes. And I'm just gonna buff like crazy. Even though there's not a lot on that brush, I still want it all over the face and down the neck. Now I'm using two foundations today. You don't have to use two. I particularly am using these two because one is super light and one is a little bit darker. Sephora's best skin ever. This has quickly become one of my very, 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 very favorite all time foundations. And then of course you, if you've been with me, you know that the number seven lift and luminate is a definite favorite. So I'm going to put one pump of the number seven that doesn't come out any huge pump, but I'm going to come out. I'm going to do one pump and then I'm going to see how much I need to get about the same amount of the Sephora on there and they're going to mix and they're going to create just a pretty color for me. So you want to start out with about one pump of whatever foundation that you choose to use. You don't want to go more than that because you'll have a tendency to want to use it up on your face and you really don't need to. I'm using a really fun brush I found on Amazon. It has like a buffer on one side and then a shader on the other side. I'm going to spray this with my Max Fix Plus. If you have any primer spray, go ahead and use that. I use two pumps on there. The reason that I use that is because I feel like once you put that spray on and then go ahead and put your foundation on the brush, you're thinning out that foundation just a little bit. Okay, so technique on this is kind of important. What we want to do is we want to kind of bounce and I want you to work in sections. So if I want to start on my cheek, I'm going to start on my cheek, but I'm only going to do my cheek to begin with. I'm not going to go up and over onto my chin or my forehead. So working in sections like this can really help you to see where you need to keep a little bit more foundation where you might need to shear it out a little bit. Make sure that you go up back into your ear. I always do. And behind my ear, it just really blends things well. And I'm just pouncing this, bouncing this all over. And now I'm going to take a tiny bit and I'm going to do my chin. And I am working, like I said, in sections. This is going to go all the way down my chin towards my neck. And then I'm going to go up over my lip, right down to the lip line, paying attention to those uh, nostril folds. A little bit more tap, and I'm going to do the nose, and I'm going to come underneath this eye. Now, you're going to notice that I don't use concealer. That is a choice that I have made because of my aging skin and how difficult it is to make my concealer look good. But Thinner foundation just looks perfect. So I've really been enjoying that. All right, I'm going to spray this one more time because now I'm going to go pretty much to the other half. I haven't done my forehead yet, but I'm going to go to the other half of my skin or my face. And I'm just going to, again, bounce this all over. All right, I'm going to spray it one more time, just one spray. And then I'm going to pick up everything excess on the back of my hand and I'm going to do my forehead. I've had a few women ask me why I go down my neck and onto my decollete. It is because it is so different colored. I know that you are supposed to match your foundation to your chest, but mine has so much discoloration that doing this evens it out and it doesn't, it makes it look not so blotchy. So I also get asked about, you know, getting it on my clothing. I, yes, it does, but personally that doesn't bother me like some people it does. So I just go ahead and, you know, bring it down my neck all the way and then go ahead and bring it down the, to the chest. All right, at this point, I want you to have a damp, dampened beauty blender or beauty sponge. You guys, this one is from EcoTools and it's supposed to be completely biodegradable, which means that it's good for the environment, which I was surprised at. It wasn't very expensive. I don't know how long it'll hold up. I've used it a half a dozen times so far, but I'm 
really kind of impressed with that. So this is dampened. It is wrung out in a towel, like what I have on my lap, and then in a tissue. And now I'm going to take just the round end, and I'm going to just very lightly press across my skin. I am not wiping at all. I am just pressing to pick up any extra foundation that you have that might make you look cakey through the day. When you do this, you are definitely going to perfect your makeup a little bit. This is going to pick up anything that might be going into your pores. It's going to pick up anything that might be going to look like texture. And it's just such a good practice to get into. You friends that have been with me for a while know how much I love the Becca um, light shifter veil powder. It's so good, but I know that this powder is not available to everybody anymore. So I've kind of come up with what I think mimics it just a little bit. Are these two powders together? The e.l.f. This is again the sheer tint and I will just pick this up. I'm not swirling. I'm just picking it up a bit and then the Milani prep set and glow not the regular one But the glow one and I'm just going to pick that up just a little bit too So now I have a lot of powder on there and I'm going to tap it off a whole bunch What I want this for more than anything is just to perfect through this area and to set these eyes down ever so slightly that's really important to me because I get creasing under there because I have deep, deep wrinkles. I, as you can see, I'm going very slowly. With, I'm trying to touch this very lightly. I want powder all over, but I don't want to look powdery. And I definitely don't want there to be a cakey look. That is what we're trying to stay away from as much as possible. So hopefully you can see how well that did. You can go underneath your eyes a little bit more if you need to. This brush is from It Cosmetics for Ulta and it will be listed and linked below as well. So I know that this is probably full of a lot of techniques that my people that have been with me for a long time have seen, but it is full of techniques that aren't the mainstream. So let's spray our brush with that. I'm going to put two full sprays on there. And now I'm going to apply my setting spray with my brush. I'm going to start right here underneath my eyes. And again, you're going to see me be really careful because I don't want any stroke motion. I just want it to be placed strategically and very lightly because I don't care what kind of setting spray it is, even if it doesn't have any alcohol in it, it can dry you out. And so I don't put a lot on, I just put enough on to help my powder melt in with my other makeup. I wasn't gonna really do any contour and blush. I was just gonna go off of camera really quick and do that, but I'm gonna do it for you. This is a new color of contour that I got from Sephora, so it's not super great. It's a cross between the uh, warmth and the contour. So you get the cool and the warm tone in here. So I guess you could call it neutral. I really enjoy putting this way up in my hairline because I have such a high hairline and I will put it right, right up in there in my hair. I'm not afraid to do that because I don't know, I wash my hair every couple of days and I like this look. So that's important to me. And if you have never had a chance to see one of my videos on contouring and contouring your um, high forehead, your double chin, all that kind of stuff, I will make sure that I link that below for you. One of the things that I want to talk about really quick while we're right here is I've been getting a lot of really, really super kind messages from you all about how much better my makeup looks and how you feel like I'm aging backwards and all of that stuff. And I appreciate that so very much. But you know what I think it is? I think it is going a little bit darker on my makeup for so long I thought because I was so light I couldn't you know pull off anything that looked very warm or very um, tanned type thing but lately I have been embracing the bronze and that is really I believe what has changed so what I'll do is once I get all of this contouring done I will go and take what's left over on my brush and then I'll just go ham all over my face and warm up my face and I really think that's what you guys are seeing more than anything is how much I'm warming up my face and right now I'm going into this Sephora collection this is the micro smooth palette and I'm going to use the highlighter that's right here on this brush I'm putting this on before my blush and it just gives a pretty look I know that most of you know that already when I talk about that 
because if you're aging putting highlighter on top can really sometimes just look much too harsh from kiko cosmetics they just came out with a new line that is called charming escape this one is their rose color rose garden in their blush these are so nice oh my word they're pigmented and they're beautiful and i'm in love with that line you can get it at ulta and i am going to be demonstrating a bunch of new makeup for you pretty soon and this blush is just gorgeous i love how buttery it is for a powder product it's so pretty so i'm just going to put my blush on over top of that highlighter what do you think? That looks so pretty over top, doesn't it? And in today's look, I did use the Norvina palette, which is coming up for sale in Ulta's 21 Days of Beauty. If you do end up getting this, I'm planning on right after the sale is over to do at least three or four looks in one video so that you guys can get a really good feel for what this is all about as a palette. So right now I'm doing a little bit more colorful. I have the blue on the top. I think I'm gonna go right here into this purple. I love this purple and then i'll just add just a tiny bit of that blue and then i'm going to just go out about a quarter of the outer part of my eye and then i'm just going to flick it towards my eyebrow tail and not bring it in hardly at all i'm going to add just a tiny bit of mascara out here all right for lips i'm using this cover girl exhibitionist lip liner and I think it's in marvelous and I'm just gonna line my lips all the way around I'm using another Sephora product. This is a lipstick and I can't decide if I like this one or not um, I can't read this to save my life and I don't have my glasses over here I'll see if I can throw it up on the screen for you it's a pretty frosty look, but at the same time, I don't know if I'm 100% convinced on it. And then the Sephora Outrageous Plumping Lip Gloss. This is one of my favorites. I've had it for years. I keep buying it over and over again. So pretty. I think this is sparkling pink. And that's the final look. I hope that you guys do enjoy this. What I want to do right this second is I want to turn my lights down just a bit so you can see a little bit in more of, I know this is a dark light. I don't normally do this because we really need to see things in a brighter light, but I'm going to turn that down. I'm turning my head so you can see if there's any discoloration. I absolutely love, I'm turning them up again. I absolutely love this method of being able to do my foundation. I feel like after years of of experimenting years of trying different things that this has finally become what I love mostly because it lasts all day it covers everything like a dream it doesn't look cakey it looks like natural skin even if you're wearing full coverage or if you're wearing just a tint it really is a great routine and I realize again that this may have taken longer but boy it is so worth it to me at the end of the day to be able to look in the mirror and go okay everything looks good good everything's looking okay and so i hope that you did enjoy it please give a thumbs up if you did i would appreciate that let me know if you have any questions at all down in the comments section please take good care of yourselves i love you very much and hopefully we will be together very soon in my next video goodbye my friends